Hello, Mastalino students! Welcome to Mastalino Classroom. Sa video na ito, ay tuturuan ko kayo kung paano gamitin ang Venn Diagram sa pag-solve ng isang math problem. In solving math problems involving sets using Venn diagram, we have to remember the following keywords. So remember the following keywords in their meaning in terms of set operations. First, if you encounter the word or, in mathematics or in set operations, it represents the operation union. Next. If you encounter the word AND, the set operation equivalent to this one is intersection. And if you encounter the word NOT, either complement or difference is the equivalent set operation for this. Now, let's have a sample problem to understand and to apply these keywords. Problem number one. There were 150 college freshmen interviewed on the class they registered. Out of 150, 85 registered for a math class. 70 were registered for an English class. And 50 were registered for both math and English. The questions are A. How many signed up only for a math class? B. How many did not sign in for an English class? C. How many signed up for math or English? And D. How many signed up neither for math nor English? Now, in order to solve this problem, we need to use a Venn diagram to illustrate and understand all the given numbers in our problem. So if we are going to analyze the given problem, we have two sets involved here. The first set contains the students registered for a math class, while for the second set, it contains the students enrolled for the English class. And for our universal set, it contains 150 college freshmen who were interviewed. Now, let us illustrate the given numbers in our problem using event diagram. So again, meron tayong dalawang sets involved. We have the set for those who enrolled math class and another set for those who enrolled for the English class. And these two sets are enclosed by a rectangle which would represent our universal set. Now, let us label our Venn diagram using the data given in our problem. First, we know that there were only a total of 150 college freshmen who were interviewed. So that would represent our universal set. So U is equal to 150. Now, sa pag-label ng ating dalawang given sets, tatandaan natin na uunahin dapat nating i-label yung intersection ng dalawang sets. Again, tatandaan natin na kapag nag-label tayo ng data sa ating dalawang given na sets, uunahin palagi yung nasa gitna or yung intersection ng dalawang sets. So, kung babalikan natin yung problem dito, sabi dito, there were 50 who registered for both math and English. So, eto yung portion kung saan natin ilalagay yung number na nagre-represent ng students who enrolled both math class and English class. So, we have 50. Now, 
let us focus ourselves for the math class or for those students who enrolled for math class. According to the problem, there were actually 85 who registered for a math class. At sa 85 na yan, kasama na dito yung 50. Kasi, hindi naman dito sinabi sa ating problem na 85 registered for a math class only. So, ibig sabihin, kasama pa sa 85 yung 50. Kasi nga, part pa siya dito ng ating set for math class. So, kapag ganun, isasubtract natin yung 85 at saka yung 50 at yung natira na lang, dito natin ilalagay. Ito yung number of students na nag-enroll na math class lamang at hindi sila nag-enroll sa English class. So, 85 minus 50, that is 35. The same is also done with the set for those who enrolled the English class. So, sabi sa problem, meron tayong 70 na nag-enroll or nag-register para sa English class. So, 70 minus 50, that is equal to 20. So, ilalagay natin dito yung 20. Ibig sabihin ng 20 na ito, sila yung nag-enroll sa English class pero hindi sila nag-enroll sa math class. That is why outside siya ng circle para sa math class. Titignan muna natin kung yung numbers na nilagay natin sa dalawang sets ay equal nga ba sa 150 na total na na interview. So, 35 plus 50 plus 20, that is equal to 105. So, ibig sabihin, 105 pa lang ito out of 150 na na-interview. Anong ibig sabihin yan? Ibig sabihin, merong mga estudyante na hindi nag-enroll either in the math class or in the English class. So, probably, nag-enroll sila sa ibang subjects except for math or English. So, 150 minus 105, that is equal to 45. Ibig sabihin, meron tayong 45 na hindi nag-enroll sa dalawang subjects na to. So, ilalagay natin dito sa labas outside of the two overlapping circles. So, kung i-checking na natin, 35 plus 50 plus 20 plus yung 45 na, na hindi nag-enroll sa math at saka sa English class, that is equal to 150, which is correct because our universal set contains the 150 freshman students who were interviewed. So, natapos na nating i-label yung ating Venn diagram ready na tayong magsagot sa ating questions. Una, how many signed up only for a math class? So, ibig sabihin sa tanong na to, ilan daw yung nag-signed up sa math class only? Sila yung mga sudyante na hindi nag-enroll in other subjects but in math class only. Looking at our Venn diagram, we have 35. We only have 35 students who enrolled for the math class only? So, the answer is 35. Next, for the second question, how many did not sign in for an English class? So, ibig sabihin, ilan daw yung isudyante na hindi nag-sign in or nag-register para sa English class? Not, meaning complement. So, ibig sabihin, kung eto yung ating set of students na nag-enroll for the English class, outside of this set, eto yung mga students na hindi nag-enroll sa English class. Eto yung 35 kasi nga math lang yung in-enroll nila. At saka yung 45 kasi nga wala silang pinili either of the two subjects. So, i-add natin yung 35 plus ng 45 that is equal to 80. So, there were actually 80 students who did not sign in for the English class since only 70 actually enrolled for the English class. Okay? So, for the third problem, how many signed up for math or English? So, kung i-recall natin, yung keywords kanina, yung or, math or English, meaning to say, yun yun ng set para sa math at ng set para sa English. So, kung titignan natin sa ating Venn diagram, 
Ito yung ating math class, ito yung ating English class. Iko-combine lang natin yung mga numbers na makikita natin sa set ng math class at saka sa set ng English class. 35 plus 50 plus 20, that is equal to 105. So, there were 105 students who registered for math or English. Next, for the last question, how many signed up neither for math nor English? So, yung 35, 50, at saka yung 20, ito yung nag-enroll para sa math or English. Yung mga hindi nag-enroll sa math nor English, ito yung 45. Yung nasa labas ng dalawang sets. So, this means we have 45 students who signed up neither for math nor English. And we are done with problem number one. So, let's proceed to problem number two, which involves three sets. So, problem number two. Out of the students asked, 13 took PE only, 20 took bio only, 30 took English only, 9 took PE and bio, 10 took PE and English, 6 took bio and English, and 4 took all three subjects. However, there were 20 who did not take any of the mentioned three subjects. And these are our questions. A. How many students were asked about the subjects they took? B. How many students took PE but not bio nor English? And for C, how many students took bio and PE but not English? So in order to solve this problem, again, we have to use a Venn diagram to clearly illustrate the given problem and to clearly understand the situation. So we have here a Venn diagram showing three overlapping circles to represent the three sets involved. And the three sets here, we have the set of students who enrolled PE, the set of students who enrolled bio, and the set of students who enrolled English. Now, so kung babalikan natin yung tip na binigay ko sa inyo sa ating first problem, this time, kapag meron tayong tatlong sets, uunahin dapat lagi natin yung common portion sa tatlong sets na to. So, yung intersection ng tatlong sets. Kung babasahin natin uli yung problem, apat sa kanila yung kumuha ng tatlong subjects na to, yung PE, Bio, at English. So, ilalagay natin sa gitna yung 4. Next natin gagawin ay ililabel natin yung intersection ng tig dalawang sets. So, according to the problem, 9 to PE and Bio. So, focus muna tayo sa PE at saka sa Bio. Siyam daw yung kumuha ng PE at Bio. So, eto yung intersection nila. At, obviously, kasama na dyan yung 4. Kasi wala naman sinabi dyan na 9 to PE and Bio only but not English. So, ibig sabihin, kasama pa dito yung 4 na kumuha din ng English. Pero, kumuha din sila ng PE and Bio. We have here 9 minus 4, so 5 na lang yung ilalagay natin dito. The same is true with PE and English. Since 10 sa kanila yung kumuha ng PE at saka yung English, kasama na dyan yung 4. So, for PE and English, eto yung intersection nila. 10 minus 4, we have 6. Ibig sabihin yan, 6 sa kanila yung kumuha ng PE at saka ng English pero hindi kumuha ng bio. Next, 6 to bio and English. Ito yung bio at saka yung English. 6 sa kanila, kasama na dyan yung 4, ang kumuha ng bio at saka yung English. 6 minus 4, that is equal to 2. So, 2 na lang yung ilalagay natin dyan. So, yung susunod natin gagawin, i-label na natin yung kumuha ng PE only, yung bio only, at saka yung English only. So, according to the problem, 13 took PE only. Hindi kasama dito yung 5 
yung 4 at saka yung 6. Kasi yung 30 na yan ay given na siya na yung kumuha lang ng PE but not the other subjects. So, pwede na natin ilagay yung 13 dito. Okay? 20 took bio only. So, we have 20. Yan for the English, 30 took English only. So, ilalagay natin yung 30 dito. And, meron pa tayong nakaligtaan na given. Sa last statement, sabi dito, there were 20 who did not take any of the mentioned three subjects. So, merong isudyante or mga isudyante na hindi kumuha ng tatlong subjects na to. So, ilalagay natin yung 20 sa labas ng overlapping circles natin. At, kung mapapansin natin, wala pa tayong given dito sa universal set kasi hindi na mention sa ating problem kung ilang isudyante yung na-interview. Ibig sabihin, para makuha natin yung universal set, ia-add lang natin lahat ng numbers na ito kasama yung 20 sa labas. If you add all of them, that is equal to 100. So, for our first question, how many students were asked about the subjects they took? And based in our Venn diagram, meron tayong a total of 100 students na tinanong tungkol sa subject na kinuha nila. For the second problem, how many students took PE but not bio nor English? Tingnan natin yung sa set ng PE. Yung 5, kumuha din siya ng PE pero kumuha siya ng bio. Yung 4, kumuha siya ng PE pero kumuha din siya ng bio at saka ng English. At saka yung 6, kumuha siya ng PE pero kumuha din siya ng English. Eto lang yung 13 na mga estudyante yung kumuha ng PE pero hindi siya kumuha ng bio at saka hindi rin siya kumuha ng English. So, ibig sabihin, yung sagot natin para sa second question ay 13. And for the last question, we have How many students took bio and PE but not English? Okay? Ilan daw yung kumuha ng bio and PE? Kung matatandaan pa yung sinabi ko, yung mga keywords natin, yung and ay nagre-represent ng intersection. So, bio and PE, tingnan natin yung set ng PE at saka ng bio. Yung intersection ng PE at saka ng bio, ito yung nasa gitna, yung 5 at saka yung 4. So, there are actually 9 students who took PE and bio. Pero, ilan sa kanila yung kumuha ng PE and bio but not English? So, kung titignan natin yung 4, kumuha siya ng PE and bio pero kumuha din siya ng English. So, ibig sabihin hindi siya kasama dito. Yung 5 students lang yung kumuha ng PE and bio but not English. So, our answer for the third question is 5. And that's all for this video. I hope na may natutunan kayo kung paano gamitin yung Venn Diagram sa pag-solve ng mga math problems involving set operations. See you in our next video.